You know, everybody wanted employee CPF also to be cut down and more take-home pay. It's so popular. It's common sense. It's very good. Good for the market. Extra 10% cash and increased purchasing power, the economy will recover. They didn't do that. If they, I was just watching and I advised against it. I said, but it's a popular thing. Up to you. But it's really not up to that. If they had done, and, if they had done that and continued to do that, I said, look, this is no go. This is going downhill. And I'll be quietly looking at the gears and saying, well, at some stage, we have to change direction. Wage restraint two years is tough. They know it's tough. And it needs persuading, particularly next year when the economy will be on its recovery. Corporate tax. The recommendation was reduced to 30% and start from this year. <clears throat> or rather, give last year's income tax. Well, Suddenly, we were in a giveaway mood. <laughs> this is crazy. These are hard-earned savings. Who's playing Santa Claus with whose money? You know Machiavelli, he said, never give what belongs to you because you will have less to give away and nobody will like you when you don't have more to give. Always give what doesn't belong to you. And I was coming to the, nearly came to the conclusion that they decided that what was saved did not belong to them. It belonged to my generation. <laughs> they did not give it away straight away. They started from next year. In other words, we influence future behavior, not past behavior. That's just, just a giveaway. And what is more, they know is necessary and it will be unpopular, there will be a consumption tax. Has to be. We are not Hong Kong. We've got a defense ministry. We've got health and social services. Who pays? <clears throat> the New Zealanders with a labor government have had to cut back income tax lower rates, and in October they are starting a 10% goods and services tax, GST. And we ought to study that and avoid some of their mistakes. I think that's better than a consumption tax. I was there in April, and that's going to be unpopular. In other words, you see the doctor or you see the accountant or the architect or the engineer and he sends you a bill, if the lawyer sends you a bill for $100,000, well, you ought to pay, let's say, 5% tax. That's $5,000. Why shouldn't you? You can afford to pay $100,000? We take a tax of 5000 That would be very fair and equitable. <clears throat> they are prepared to deal with aging pro population problems don't have to. Just postpone it. When it happens, another government down the road in the year 2010 or 2005 will deal with it. Is that the way to govern? So they say, no, we'll deal with it now. CPF minimum, 30,000, which includes the value of a house, and you withdraw a sum every month from the age of 60. And the Acting Minister for Labour will announce this in Parliament and it's de in detail soon. But they are prepared to tackle it. And of course, most important of all, this declining birth rate. You can take the cowardly way out and say, very touchy. Leave it. Let's think about it. We've been thinking about this for the last several years since the 1980 census became clear, 1981-82. 
And every year that passes by is a year lost. And you don't take, you don't take a decision and you immediately have more babies. It's going to take five, seven, nine years before you have a turning of the corner. But it's very sensitive. Of course it's sensitive. 14,000 babies short every year. It's, that's for replacement. What is the explanation? Well, what I brought out three years ago, educated girls are not getting married. Graduates and A-levels, I did not want to confuse the picture then, I just dealt with graduates. On present projections, 40% of all women who go to university will stay unmarried. No, there are no graduates to marry you. That's that. We have been capturing the data of the Registry of Marriages. Nineteen eighty three, thirty seven per cent male graduates married female graduates. After I raised the balloon and told them it wasn't the best of choices in the world, it increased by four per cent in eighty four to forty one per cent. It's actually 37.7 to 41.7. In other words, they are rational thinking men. Never mind all the hullabaloo in the press. All the foreign correspondents started writing what a crackpot government trying to interfere with people's lives. We have already interfered with people's lives and got them into a mess. We gave them equal educational opportunities we gave them equal job opportunities. We did not understand because we were too young that we could not change cultural values. That the males, together with mother's milk, learned that they must be the boss in the family and if they marry another graduate, they won't be the boss. <laughs> so, they all married down. Result, 85, another improvement to 45%. 86, first half of this year, improvement to 49%. So since I raised the matter in 37, SDU plus other activities, net increase from 37 to 49%. So I say, don't give up. <laughs> Get the message across. Read it year after year. The facts and the figures cannot lie. On the present trend, 40% women graduates will not marry and 36 or 37% A-levels will not.